In this video, we're going to go over some of the methods that we can use when we are sketching graphs of linear functions. So let's say we were given the function f of x is equal to x plus 4, and we were asked to sketch the graph of this function. Well, we actually already know of one of the methods that we can use to sketch graphs, and that is the method that we've been using thus far in these videos. And that is the method in which we're going to plug in different values for x and calculate what our y would be at those different values for x, and that's going to give us multiple points in our graph that we can then join using a line. So that is one of our methods that we can use in any graph to sketch a graph, but that also happens to be the most time consuming method. And that's because we're going to have to plug in multiple different values for x, calculate what our y value will be for those values of x, and put all of those different points onto our graph and then join the line. But in today's video, we're gonna see that there are a few other methods that we can use to sketch graphs of linear functions that are much less time consuming. So the first thing that we want to do when we are given a function like this is to find out a few key pieces of information about that function. And the first thing that we should do is determine our y-intercept. So we can recall that linear functions are going to come in the general form of y is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope of the graph, x is our input value or x-coordinate, and b is our y-intercept. So we can just tell by looking at this function here that our y-intercept is going to be 4 and our slope or our m is going to be 1. This is the same thing as 1x plus 4. So we know from this graph that our y-intercept is equal to 4 and our slope is equal to 1. And having a slope of 1 means that our change in y over our change in x is equal to 1 over 1. That means that for our rise over run, our vertical change over our horizontal change is going to be 1 over 1. So for every vertical change, we have one horizontal change. And we're going to see that more closely when we actually sketch out our graph. Now we'll remember from our last video that there is another piece of information that we can easily get from this function, and that is our x-intercept. So if we want to determine what our x-intercept is, we're just going to set our entire function equal to zero. So we're going to set x plus 4 equal to zero, and that means that x is equal to negative 4. So that is our x-intercept. So already we have three key pieces of information about our function. We have our y-intercept, we have our slope, and we have our x-intercept. And we can draw our graph just using these three pieces of information. So let's actually use this information to draw our graph. So I'm going to put a Cartesian plane over here. So here we have our Cartesian plane. I'm not going to put the actual numbers in here because it can get a little bit messy when we're trying to visualize our graph, but each of these notches is going to represent a unit of 1. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, and here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and negative 1 to negative 7 on this part down here. So now when we're trying to sketch our graph, we can put in the pieces of information we have. Let's start off with our y-intercept. We know that in this graph we have a y-intercept of 4. So that means that we're going to have this graph crossing the y-axis, which is this vertical axis, at y is equal to 4. So y is equal to 4 is 1, 2, 3, 4. That's right over here. So we can put a point over here at y is equal to 4. Then we have our x-intercept where x is equal to negative 4. So x is equal to negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Over here, this is negative 4. So we can put a point there. Now, while we're here, I should mention that it's actually possible to sketch this graph using only the y and x-intercept. We don't actually need to know the slope in order to sketch this graph. Because we have two points on this graph, we can simply join these two dots in a line, and that is going to be a pretty close approximation of what our graph is going to look like. So it is possible to sketch a graph just using your x and y intercepts and then joining those two dots in a line. 
But of course, if we are more interested in some points that are outside of these two dots, let's say we wanted to know what our value would be somewhere over here or somewhere over here, then we might want to use a slightly more precise method. So another thing that we can do is we can take one of our points and use our slope to actually determine the next few points after that point. So let's start off with this one right here. We know that this is one of our points, and we know that our slope is 1. And that means that our change in y over our change in x is equal to 1 over 1. So for every change in y, there is an equal change in x. So that means that y is going to increase by 1, and x is going to increase by 1. So we're going to have our second point over here. Our next point, we're going to have y increasing by 1 again and x increasing by 1 again. So that's going to be a point over here. From here, we're going to have another increase in y and one increase in x. So that's going to be a point here. And we can see that, again, we're going to get to our y-intercept point just by using our slope. We're going to have one increase in y and one increase in x. And that gets us to this point right here. And we can draw out some more additional points so we know that there is one rise and one run. Our slope is 1 over 1. So again, we're going to have one rise and one run. And this graph is just going to keep going as a straight line like this. So we can connect these points. So our graph is going to look like this. So we've managed to sketch this graph just using our y and x-intercepts and our slope. And remember, we would get a similar looking graph if we just joined our x and y-intercepts. If we didn't have these points in between, we would still get something that looks very similar to this just by joining a line between our x and our y-intercepts. So we don't actually need to find out all of this information about our graph. We can sketch a graph using only our x and y intercepts. And likewise, we can actually sketch our graph using just one of our points and our slope. If we know a single point of ours, so if we just know our y intercept and our slope, we can still sketch the same graph. And that would also go if we only knew our x intercept and our slope. So we only need two pieces of information out of these three pieces to actually sketch our graph. So let's look at one more example. f of x is equal to 3x minus 2. And now we were asked to graph this function of 3x minus 2. So let's start out by writing out the pieces of information that we know about this function. Just by looking at it, we can tell that our y-intercept is going to be negative 2 and our slope is going to be 3. So we know that we have a y-intercept of negative 2, and we have a slope of 3. And we can write down this slope of 3 as 3 over 1. And the reason I'm writing the slope as 3 over 1 is because when we're using our slope to graph our functions, we're going to use our slope in the sense of finding out our vertical change and our horizontal change. In the last video, I had referred to our slope numerous times as rise over run. So this top number, our change in y, that is our rise, and this bottom number is our run. So what a slope of 3 means is that for every 3 increases in y, we have 1 increase in x. So that means that we're going to go upwards 3 points and write 1 point. And the opposite is also true. If we wanted to go 3 down, then we would be going 1 to the left. So that is how you're going to use your slope to figure out additional points. So let's actually sketch out this graph using only these two pieces of information. So let's get our Cartesian plane right here. So let's start off by putting in our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is negative 2. So negative 2 is right over here. This is where y is equal to negative 2. And now we can use this point and our slope to determine the other points in this graph. So we're going to start from this point, And we know that if we increase our y by 3, we have to increase our x by 1. So we go up by 3 and right by 1. So 1, 2, 3, and 1 right. So our second point is going to be over here. Then we can again go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and right 1. So that our, second, our third point is going to be here. 
Then we can again go up three, one, two, three, and right one. So we have another point here. And if we want to complete the graph down here, we can do the same thing and extend these points in this direction. So from our starting point, we can go down three, one, two, three, and left one. So that's going to be a point over here. And again, from here, we can go down three again, one, two, three, and left one again. So that would be slightly off our axis, but a point around here. And now we can just connect these dots using our line. So this is how we can sketch the graph of this function. And the only thing that we needed to know was our y-intercept and our slope. So we can see that we actually have a few additional methods that we can use to sketch graphs of linear functions in a much faster way than actually putting in multiple different values for x and calculating what our y values would be and plotting those coordinates. We can graph functions by simply determining what our y-intercept is and our slope, or our y and our x-intercept and just joining those together, or knowing our x-intercept and our slope, and knowing either of those two things is going to allow us to graph our functions very easily and very quickly.